The CS nominee for information and ICT was once on this show and he said, we have become a Fuliza country. Fuliza is a brand. It means a lot of things, especially when you're talking about simple overdraft facilities, right? We're going to be discussing Fuliza now because um, Fuliza uh, reviewed their charges. We want to understand how that happened and why it matters with the review of the Fuliza charges. Eric Murillo Kingari, the Group Director for Digital Business at NCBA Bank, is here with us. Before we say hello to him, let CT give him the day's proverb. Yes, our proverb is from the country of Libya. What is collected by an ant in a year is carried away once by a camel's foot. What is collected by an ant in a year is carried away once by a camel's foot. And, and uh, bear this in mind, these are human ears, as in Y-E-A-R-S, not E-A-R-S. Mm. Human ears, not ant ears. I, we, I, do we really know how to count years according to the calendar of the ant? How long do ants live? Do we know uh, how am I supposed to, to know that? The <laughs> <laughs> well, lifespan of an insect is... Okay, never mind. <laughs> well, it shocked me that, you know, what could be the world to you is a fleeting moment to somebody else. Precisely. Yeah. What could be you? Well, yes, what well, is your... It could be in your whole thing, your whole mm. business, and somebody just whizzes by and it's like, okay, can, do you not notice my effort and my stress and my struggle? And somebody's, that's one minute in somebody else's <laughs> existence. Precisely. It means a lifetime of work. Yeah. In, and, and by the way, this camel didn't seek to extinguish the efforts of no, the... No, no. Uh, he was just going his about business. his business. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. that's it. It's the big boys. Eric, good morning. Good morning. Good Th morning. This is going to be fun. Welcome <laughs> to Kenya's biggest conversation. That's right. It's the second time we've had two Eric's in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So I think it's going to be a good conversation. Eh? It is. When of we course. refer to Eric, we'll be referring to you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <Not> him. <laughs> if, if, if we refer to him, you'll hear saying Nani. <laughs> 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 I'll, I'll love you maybe to start with a very small correction. Eric Murio King Jaggi. Jaggi. Jaggi, yes. Okay. That is correct. Uh, but a very interesting start uh, about your camel proverb. Yes. And I was just listening to the banter you've continued with it and the camel and the ant both play two very different roles yes and uh, in as much as the camel is just going on about its way yes it has a very clear and important role it is playing when yes. picking up the efforts of the ant yes and being able to take them even further than the ant would have taken uh -huh. and let's appreciate uh, whatever the ant is putting together is what uh, for those who follow biology that's oh. how pollination and uh, dissemination of uh, do I say species? And migration. <laughs> and migration. Yes. And certainly the camel will travel a much further distance than the ant. So there's a very important uh, Let's say it will, it will travel faster. Faster. Yes. And further. Yes, and, and further. further. <laughs> mm. yeah. Yes, yes. A lot of wisdom in Africa. Eh? Mm -hmm. Interesting perspective there, Eric. Yeah. Very good. Very good one. Now let's talk about uh, Fuliza and NCBA. We deal with Fuliza with Safaricom. Mm -hmm. Where do you come in? I think the NCBA story is a, is a very good story to tell. Mm. And um, I've been quite uh, proud to have been part of that story for about 15 years. Um, Mshwari is a precursor to uh, Fuliza. Mm. M-Pesa is a precursor to Mshwari. And right from the beginning, right from the first day of M-Pesa, uh, NCBA was involved in not just uh, supporting, but actually uh, participating in the co-creation of uh, digital financial services in Kenya. Um, our contribution, uh, if I take the story back from M-Pesa, was to define and design the regulatory model that uh, permitted the launch of M-Pesa. If you recall, uh, at the beginning of M-Pesa, there was a lot of pushback, particularly from the banking industry. Uh, but we were able to see the opportunity that uh, these kinds of innovation portends. Mm. Uh, there wasn't a regulatory framework uh, at the time. And uh, so any regulation around financial services could only be anchored off a bank. So we did uh, step up and worked with Mpesa, Safaricom, worked with the Central Bank of Kenya to def develop a framework mm. uh, upon which uh, mobile financial services was then launched. 
I've been in the industry now 15 years, uh, this particular digital financial services space, and everywhere we have gone to, the regulatory model we developed back in uh, 2007 mm. is what every other jurisdiction has continued to copy and add their own specific nuances around. Um, that was at the launch of M-Pesa. Mm. So NCBA was then the host for all M-Pesa deposits under the trust uh, uh, account framework. Yeah. Um, coming forward about uh, five years later, uh, the greatest call to Safaricom uh, contact center was customers asking Safaricom to pay them interest. And I appreciate more M-Pesa is a payment service. It's not a deposit taking uh, service. But customers had started uh, leaving money behind uh, or leaving balances, staying over in their mobile money wallets. I think if you recall the early days of M-Pesa, you would walk into a cash agent, give them cash, they give you e-value, and immediately you send money to somebody. Mm -hmm. So initially it started, those balances were very transient. But as the utility of mobile money for both uh, P2P, when you're sending money to someone, and also, and particularly when Lipa and M-Pesa was launched, where you're now retaining balances so that you use them to pay at merchant locations, customers started uh, retaining and even accumulating balances mm. on their mobile money wallets. And uh, in one form or the other, that was evidence of savings. Uh, but the regulatory model, again, did not uh, provide for M-Pesa to uh, hold deposits and pay interest. Mm. Uh, so that was the problem statement, again, uh, that uh, they came to us with. And uh, we bathed uh, M-Shuari, which is being a deposit-taking service. This is actually an NCBA bank product. Um, we also uh, were uh, fortunate, maybe that's a story for another day, mm. to, we actually considered uh, that there is an opportunity to introduce uh, digital credit and we have to be very proud as Kenyans to be able to say we are not just the first to create mobile money mm. but we are also the first to create a lending model that uses alternative data mm. to make a credit decision. So we launched a uh, i in uh, 2012, November. Um, I like to tell this story in the sense, at that time, I think the large companies in terms of number of users, mm. if you take Facebook at the time, it had taken them about 10 months to hit a million customers. Mm. It took us 41 days to hit a million customers on Mshuari. Um That was in 2012. We have since grown uh, Mshuari deposits, because remember, it is faster savings uh, instrument. Yeah since grown those deposits to about 35, 36 billion Kenya shillings, mm. uh, paying interest above what a typical bank would, mm. and will pay interest even for one shilling. Um, the credit side of Mshuari also took off, and I spent quite a bit of time uh, visiting neighborhoods like Kibera and Madare, just trying to understand how informal credit works. Mm. Um, Interestingly, at the time, I'd also just completed uh, my MBA at uh, Strathmore, and my thesis actually was on uh, the use of alternative data for credit scoring. Mm -hmm. And just trying to understand how informal credit works with the Shylocks uh, who give cash credit mm -hmm. for about 10% interest per day. Um, understanding credit at the shopkeeper level, where you're borrowing your unga and your bread to pay at the end of the week and so on just understanding how those conversations happen mm. and not just the access to credit but also how the what in banking we call it credit life cycle how customers then are managed when that debt needs to be repaid and there's a lot of inefficiency very high cost and actually very something that's never spoken about is just the indignity of knowing up you're mm. the guy who is not able to pay or has been chased mm. And uh, that's really what I'm sure sought, uh, to give dignity uh, to households, uh, particularly households that have informal income and, mm. uh, or, and or are wage earners. Mm. Also, very importantly, to serve, play the role of smoothening of cash flows. And uh, we fail to appreciate how important that job is because each one of us at some moments, you have a bit of surplus and you're able to s conveniently and cost effectively save. Uh, I'm sure I think uh, at the time and probably to, to date is the only saving service where there is no cost to moving money into your savings account mm. and moving money out of out your savings of account or even retaining balances. Um, and then, of course, to be able to access credit at any time with dignity. Mm. Uh, that was in 2012. We grew, I'm sure, 
Uh, today we have about 31 million registered uh, mshwari users. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also uh, exported this uh, to Tanzania in uh, 2014, to Uganda and Rwanda in 2016, uh, to Ivory Coast in 2018. And I think it's also a very important story that uh, we shouldn't just be an export economy of agricultural product. If you look at uh, our top FX earners, uh, save for diaspora remittances, everything else is produce. Yep. Um, and I think um, from where I, I see it, when you look at financial services uh, in Africa, it, uh, we need to begin regarding financial services, particularly digital financial services, as an export into Africa. Mm -hmm. And we've uh, led the way amongst other banks also that have begun expanding beyond uh, Kenya. I think we are the only Kenyan bank that can say we have business in uh, Francophone uh, <laughs> West Africa and uh, continuing to expand. Uh, the Coming forward, the Fuliza story then came in in 2019. And uh, Fuliza actually was an idea that we had begun putting together in 2015 with uh, our partner Safaricom. Uh, but at the time, they were also doing the migration of their platform from Germany to Kenya, stabilizing that. So it took a bit of time uh, before we were able to take it to market. So we began this project in 2018, uh, took it to market, I think, in January uh, 2019. And Fuliz actually addressed or was able to execute digital credit uh, mm -hmm. better than Mshwari with one very important difference. With Mshwari, when you need credit, mm -hmm. you first go to Mshwari to draw down the credit uh, against your credit limit. Yeah. With Fuliza, however, is whilst you're within the payment transaction, um, the payment service then notifies you that you may have insufficient funds, funds in your M-Pesa wallet, but then notifies you what your credit limit on Fuliza is. So in that way, it was far more convenient uh, than uh, Mshwari from a U customer journey mm. perspective. Um, it's important to also discuss the intentions we had when introducing M uh, Fuliza was not to replace Mshwari, and the two products actually have continued to grow uh, side by side. If you think about it, um, Mshwari heralded short-term credit. Uh, it's a 30-day loan. Mm. Fuliza came in to actually address what I'll call ad hoc convenience credit, mm. whilst Mshwari is more of planned credit. I, I need x amount that i will pay back in, in within 30, 30 days. days and actually i'm sure it gives you 30 days and a rollover option for another 30 days uh, your m sure limit is typically larger than your full user limit mm. um, the job we're seeking to do at the time or to serve customers with is particularly when lipan and pesa also was beginning to grow in, uh, grow in uh, significance we observed that uh, almost 50 percent 50 to 56 percent of m-pesa transaction attempts were not being completed due to insufficient funds mm. and those customers will then come to repeat the same transaction two to four days later so what we're trying to solve is okay if you actually would have the funds two to four days later why don't we allow you to complete the transaction now and two and to four days later you then will be able to uh, pay back or replenish the funds in your Fuliza wallet. So the design was actually looking to serve that two to four day customer. That uh, is the Fuliza now. Fuliza. Fuliza design is a short term. Very short term ad hoc mm. uh, credit. Uh, the value is actually, if you look at the typical Fuliza drawdown amount, is mm. about 370 Kenya shillings today. Mm. The typical Mshwari drawdown amount is about uh, 7,000 Kenya shillings. So those are two very different jobs. Um, but of course, uh, enter, is it 2019 or 2020, when 2020 with COVID, COVID mm -hmm. customers who are typically paying back their loans in four to seven days, we saw that beginning to stretch out. Uh, in 2020, also with regards to digital lenders, uh, we, we already had uh, witnessed a crowding in of uh, a product category that we had launched. Yeah. And I think in Kenya, I counted almost over 100 digital credit providers. Mm. In 2020, the bulk of these exited the market. There are very few digital lenders who understood the dynamics of a pandemic situation, mm. uh, understood that we needed to stand with customers uh, during this very, very uh, difficult period, and were able to um, 
continue to provide credit support to our customers for about six months when a lot of particularly the service industry mm. there were just no incomes was it yeah. that they didn't understand or they didn't have the muscle to it is a function it is both and uh, I, would, I would say i we also had the pressure uh, because we soaked in quite a bit of losses in 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 for about three or four months mm. uh, running but we yes we had the muscle but we also had the understanding that we should not exit because we are in this market in the long run. So de deserting your customer at their time of need, <laughs> um, when you do come back when things are better <laughs> as, a, as a fair you. weather friend. Mm -hmm. They shall revisit. <laughs> yes, the customers <laughs> shall revisit. <laughs> uh, so it was a very uh, important decision. We saw uh, very many lenders exit the market. Mm. Uh, very many lenders who didn't exit tighten their credit access rules. We also saw very funny practices uh, come in. And you think it's at that time then you said hearing a lot of noise from the market mm. about some of these practices of digital lenders. Yeah. What uh, are some of those practices, Eric? What are we talking about here that yeah. uh, was then uncomfortable? Yes, I think uh, particularly with the introduction of the, the digital credit providers uh, regulation uh, that the central bank is now driving, which, is, which I think is a very positive development. Some of the issues that the regulator has sought to address is issues to do with um, uh, consumer protection. Mm -hmm. uh, you believe you borrowed at this price, but when you look at the actual cost, mm. it f it's different mm. or it doesn't work out to the exact cost as that was advertised. Or very uh, exorbitant penalties mm -hmm. that are applied uh, when you're a bit late with your repayments. Yeah. Uh, and even some of the uh, the customer engagement mechanisms where because I borrowed, uh, my wife or my brother or my dad is getting a phone call yeah. about 2,000 bob that I owe someone. <laughs> uh, and, and really, the, the idea is not just from a consumer protection law, but remember earlier I talked about dignity. Mm -hmm. uh, people want to engage with their affairs mm. with some degree of dignity sure yeah and then these practices uh, i think it's it, it was necessary that it is uh, it was sanitized in a space of 10 years to have start with just one innovator then end up with over a hundred suppliers uh, there's there's a case for regulation and i think the regulation is coming in at the right time mm. having allowed the market to develop and the good and bad practices to be now observable mm. Mm. You, as NCBA, birthed these ideas. Yes. But other financial institutions also now benefit from them. Correct. Now, that provides direct competition for you. Correct. As the mother of these delightful products, and as the people who actually pioneered it, mm. I'm thinking of research and development. Mm -hmm. How do you retain a benefit that should accrue to someone who started the process mm -hmm. and who actually gave it the wings to fly? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very important question uh, that you ask. And uh, I don't know whether I can bring your Carmel and Aunt proverb here. <laughs> but <laughs> please, throw in a donkey <laughs> if you like. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, one thing that uh, we actually really debated uh, back in 2012, 2013, is whether we should patent what we have uh, uh, created. Uh, we did consult with experts. And I have to say um, with humility that it, it is very difficult to patent an idea. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it, it's, it's really just a process. And if you think about banking, in as much as uh, the industry has become the greatest consumer or user of technology, the fundamentals of banking really haven't changed. No. What changes is the how. Mm. Um, the fundamentals of how you assess someone for credit, uh, the fact that we've digitized it, the fundamentals are exactly the same. So we've improved the method, but not the substance. Uh, so at that time, we actually did uh, consider going that route. Uh, we recognized the effort it will take and the difficulty of proofing the difference. Mm. It was possible, uh, but we thought it's not a worthwhile pursuit. 
Um, I think one, we already had the benefit of uh, a fast mover advantage, meaning that we were learning faster uh, and learning more than anyone who's coming in late into the market. Mm. And second, um, we have been able to sustain a very entrepreneurial uh, spirit, both at the shareholder level and also at management level, which then means that, yes, uh, today we set the bar here. Catching up with us doesn't mean you'll find us here. Mm. We shall have moved on. And that really is a culture that uh, we've, go, we've continued uh, to develop uh, at NCBA Digital Business. Do I hear you to be saying that this was NCBA's CSR to the banking industry? Uh, it's not CSR. <laughs> it's, um, we, we, we actually are not serving the industry. We are serving the customer. And um, the two innovations, and there's others I, I believe we'll have time to talk about today, w you'll note that consistently what we have done better than most is to listen listen to what the customer is looking for. I'm sure he listened to the calls or rather uh, customers calling the, uh, the Safaricom contact center saying, I want to be paid interest. Mm -hmm. We also listened to the customer when we are seeing a lot of, uh, this actually has been and continues to be a lot of informal credit in the industry um, that is very ineffe inefficiently delivered. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fuliza, again, was just listening to customers who are trying to complete transactions, customers who had clearly demonstrated that they're preferring to pay digitally as opposed to pay with cash. Mm. So um, our service has always been to respond to the customer's need. Uh, and it's really, it's not, then one would argue that uh, we are not innovating, but simply just listening and responding. Mm. Yeah. Listening is a serious innovation. Very. Because right. most human beings are fairly incapable of actually listening. Yes. Yes. Or listening and hearing. <laughs> Two different things. <laughs> <laughs> Two different yes. things. Yes. Let's take a break. Yes. Yeah. It's 29 minutes after nine. Our guest this morning is Eric Moriyuki Njage. He's a group director for digital business at NCBA. We're talking about Fuliza. Mm. So we know that Fuliza has reviewed their charges. We want to understand how this happened and why it matters and what we should expect next. And also, then how can customers take advantage of this particular new move? At half past nine, schools are back. Schools are back. And Naivas is saying, welcome back to school with the Shuja back to school offer. And I've um, been back for a minute, but Naivas is extending this and saying, okay, come in and do your school shopping and get everything that you need. Celebrating Shujas who have been the teachers, who've been the learners and even the parents. Find out how you can do more of that on the Spice Drive with Quatch from 3 to 7 p.m. Indeed. Let's take that quick break. Take a look at the weather and traffic. We will be back shortly. Mario Kinjage, the Fuliza guy, NCBA <laughs> Group Director for Digital Business. So, Eric, last week you announced the review of Fuliza charges. What does this mean exactly? Uh, thank you. Um, so what, what we sought to address was um, two things. One, just the cost of uh, Fuliza that was structural, but also the consumer behavior that was leading to a higher cost of credit for a product that was designed to be a very short-term loan. Mm -hmm. Um, Ali had mentioned that uh, by design, we were anticipating that most Fuliza drawdowns will be paid back within four to seven days and the force for the first year and slightly longer than a year that actually held true uh, because what we do is basically try and assess using your uh, mpesa uh, inflow and outflow data mm -hmm. the likelihood of this customer drawing down what is the likelihood of the customer replenishing their mpesa balance mm -hmm. in four to seven days and that then determines the customers that qualify for a Fuliza credit mm. limit and also determines the size of your Fuliza credit limit but as i uh, pointed out earlier uh, with covid we saw customer customer repayment periods lengthening move from four to seven days to 10 to 12 days and got to a point where it was actually now about 14 to 19 days mm -hmm. uh, an average of about 17 days and very clearly then that uh, based on the pricing structure which has an interest uh, charge 
for each day that you are overdrawn on your Mpesa wallet, mm. then of course, if it's charged per day, then the longer you have that credit outstanding, then the higher yeah. your, your cost of credit. Mm. So you'll note uh, the changes we made are of two types. The first was to try and influence customer behavior to pay back sooner mm -hmm. by instead of charging you from the next day, we give you three days grace period where there isn't an interest charge mm -hmm. on your Fuliza drawdown uh, amount that is drawn down. Okay. Uh, now, we have to also do the work of educating customers to appreciate that, yes, if the intention was to give you very short-term credit, if I give you a three-day no-charge credit, uh, then there's a proportion of customers, we hope very many, that will appreciate the what we are signaling and draw down and pay back sooner. within the three days. Yes, mm -hmm. so that we start pulling that average of number of days outstanding, we start pulling that average downwards. That actually is the major change we have made, uh, although more of the focus goes into the cost mm -hmm. of the credit. Uh, the cost of the credit also now that we have operated the service for over two years, we then have sufficient data to get us to be smarter about how we price uh, for for Fuliza credit. Mm. We, just to give you a bit of data, 70% um, of our customers borrow within the band of 100 to 500 Kenya shillings. Mm. That band is, has a fixed uh, charge, uh, interest charge of 5 shillings per day. Mm. That category of individual, that group, mm -hmm. in numbers, how mm. many are they? So it's uh, the numbers with Fuliza are large. Um, we have about 4.7 million drawdowns per day. Seven in this category? No, no, total. Total. Mm. Total. And 70% 70 70 of, of that, that is that's about 3.2, 3.3 million uh, within 100 to 500 Ken shillings. Uh, you recall I stated that the average drawdown amount is 374 shillings. Yes. yes. Now, and it's not that most customers have a zero balance, then draw down to 374. It could be someone with a 10,000 shilling balance in the M-Pesa wallet, mm. but the transaction is 10,000 or 11,000. Mm. So they fully are the 1,000. So it's not necessarily the you are starting at zero. It's just the amount that you're going over your M-Pesa wallet balance. Mm. So it is, it is a large population every day, including Sundays. Um, so we then looked at that and said the, there is, has been a disconnect between the intention of the product and the consumer understanding of that intention and hence their behavior. Hmm. How would you connect the two? Because I don't know that because I mean, look at the reasons why uh, pe people are, are, are borrowing money. And I think they, they are different uh, across the board. And when we're looking at those amounts, sometimes it's to get through the day. I mean, if we're mm -hmm. going to be serious, mm -hmm. it's about it's about getting through the day and then the hope that tomorrow something will, be will come that will be better, right? Mm -hmm. It's about running a small business whereby mm -hmm. you need um, uh, capital injection to be able to get some of your Water products capital, on board. Yeah. Abs yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So how would you then connect the two? Mm -hmm. Because you bringing a product to the market and mm -hmm. hoping that the population who is then going to partake of this mm -hmm. has the same understanding as the creator of the product, mm -hmm. dealing in a situation whereby we're dealing with high stress, low incomes, low capital, mm -hmm. non-existent capital mm -hmm. in some cases. Mm -hmm. For a lot of people, it's there's a pool, there's access, I'm going to get it. Understanding what you may have had in mind mm -hmm. and how you are going to deliver it mm -hmm. may not be top of their priority. Yes. I, I think there's a very important job we have to do mm. after the changes we introduced uh, last week, mm -hmm. and, and that is communicating and educating the right. customer. Mm. Yeah. To, for the customer to recognize, actually, you have two devices available to you. Mm. There's a 30-day loan mm. and there's an overdraft. Mm. The overdraft Fuliza is an overdraft. Fuliza is an overdraft. Mm -hmm. mm. and, and again, uh, I think we need to also mm. remember that uh, when we talk financial inclusion, mm -hmm. 10 years ago, overdrafts were the preserve of the very few wealthy. Yep. Uh, to be able to give 4.7 million overdrafts per day, um, we, we, we fail to realize the significant development uh, yep. that has happened there. Mm. Uh, but, but what we are saying is today that the job of educating the customer to know when is the right 
time to use Fuliza? Mm. And when is the right time to use Mshwari? Mshwari? Mm. Because the same customer will have access to both uh, yeah. devices. Mm -hmm. But the journey uh, for Fuliza is a bit more uh, easier to use, not to access, to mm -hmm. use. Because it's when you're transacting, you get that message that says you have insufficient funds, yeah. but you have a Fuliza limit. So one of the things we're looking to do is at that moment, that is when we should tell you you have a Fuliza limit, which is an overdraft, but you also have a 30-day loan. Mm. So which is the right device to use? So if it's the person who's doing, um, assuming you sell, uh, you have a small food stall mm. and you need to bring in two crates of soda into your shop. That's 5,000 Kenya shillings. Mm. Is Fuliza the right device? Mm -hmm. Are you going to sell all the sodas today mm. and, pay and receive day. payments into your Mpesa wallet? Or will you want to pay back in 10 days mm. or 20 days? Mm. So we are looking to try and innovate the customer journey so that the customer is better able to appreciate the devices available to them. Mm. Uh, we also are getting very strong feedback that beyond the Fuliza, which is a daily charge, probably 30 days is too far out. Yes. Mm. I probably want a 10-day loan mm. or a 20-day loan. Yeah. Mm. And even when you, 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 you look at how credit is being consumed informally, when mm. somebody comes to you asking for, give me 2,000 bob, they don't say, always say they'll pay you back next month. They say most times end of the week yep. or end of the month. Mm. But end of the week might be Wednesday, so we'll pay you on Friday. Or it might be... 20th, mm. I'll pay you on 30th. Mm. So we have to try and uh, mimic or uh, digitally the actual observed behavior because uh, when innovating, you don't try and change customers. You try and mimic mm. your products. But, but let me ask you this. Huh? What you're saying not only makes sense, mm -hmm. but if it was a song that was being sung, I would say it's rhythmic. It is very pleasant to hear. Mm -hmm. And it's pleasant because it's true. Mm -hmm. But then it requires regularity. It requires consistency. Correct. Because that's how you get to understand patterns of behavior. Correct. But now when you talk about COVID and the aftermath, more so the aftermath, mm -hmm. it threw all that into a bit of whack. Yes, yes, yes. Because I will borrow anticipating a payment if I'm a business person. Mm -hmm. I'm even borrow anticipating a salary. Mm -hmm. And these are no longer certainties. Yes. The pattern that I was accustomed to and which led to this behavior pattern that I had has now been thrown out of work now. You've talked about considering it and giving that three-day allowance and also understanding mm -hmm. that perhaps this particular client may have required something that you didn't offer. Now, I'm going back to r and Yes. When you say you listen to the customer, yes. beyond just looking at the patterns of the transaction, what else do you do? Because somebody, I may pay you because I've borrowed from someone to pay you. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean I had the money. Yes. So I've extended, well, my indebtedness because I now owe somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you get to listen to the customer beyond looking yes. at his spending patterns? Yeah. So uh, looking at data is one thing that we do, and uh, I think we do that very well. It's reliable. The yes. other thing that we do is actually talk to customers. Yes. We very frequently organize customer focus groups. Mm. In some cases where we call in these customers to come into our environment because we want to show them something. If when you're going through design, does this look like the right solution for you? Uh, is that message understandable to you, what I am trying to communicate? In other cases, we actually just go into the market to observe, uh, to talk to customers in the market. So a lot of, um, as I was saying earlier, th the biggest part to innovation actually is listening. Uh, and listening is in many forms. It's either um, analysis, data analysis that you're doing, is calling customers to observe and participate in your design process. Mm -hmm. Or it's also going to the customer's environment uh, to observe and listen. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the, the changes we are looking to introduce are not things we thought up last week. Uh, this has been ongoing conversations. 
Uh, but of course, one has to think about timing, when is the right time to introduce this. Second, where, with regards to communication, particularly when you're serving pretty much every Kenyan, then you have to con communicate consistently and have faith, even as you're checking with the customer, that mm. your message is actually being understood. Actually listening mm. and uh, observing mm. are the fundamentals of data collection. Correct. Yes. Correct. So. Yes, I would say you're on the right path. Mm. Yes, <laughs> coming from a scientist, I'll give you a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, I've got to ask you. Yes. How do you rate uh, a user and their then their ability to borrow and their limits for borrowing? Mm. What do you use? What metrics do you use? Mm -hmm. uh, I think um, other than talking to the metrics, because this will keep changing, mm. uh, as I said earlier, the, the fundamentals of credit have never changed. Even when I come to you, to ask for 10,000 bob, the first thing you check is the strength of the relationship. Yep. How long do you know this person and what do you know of this person? Mm -hmm. But first is how well do I know this person? Now, if I've just walked in, uh, irrespective of how I look in terms of ability to pay, mm -hmm. if you don't know me, we're not going to have a transaction. Yeah. The second is, as I teased out, uh, ability to pay. You then look for indicators of ability to pay. Mm -hmm. And finally, willingness to pay. I may know you, you may have the ability to pay, but you do not have a history of honoring your obligations. Mm. And obligations could be credit obligations, could be anything that is a financial commitment mm. that, uh, so, so, so all this is basically dependent correct. on what you know about me correct as i come to you correct and in terms of my inter my direct interaction with you yes but you have access to another pool of information yes Eric, so, so i'm, I'm coming to that okay. so we then need to appreciate it those are the three fundamentals mm -hmm. the strength of the relationship ability to pay and willingness to repay so when we are looking for data to be able to we call it scoring uh, to score a customer, and a score really is just a rank order. Mm. Amongst the four of us, we must, we should be able, sc scoring will then say who has the highest score cool. with regards to those three uh, p um, perspectives. Yeah. So we look at your digital payments data, so that's with uh, our, the partnership that we have with M-Pesa. Mm -hmm. We also look at your credit history as reported at the CRB, the Credit Reference Bureau. Mm -hmm. Now, again, that's another <laughs> huge di di discussion topic, yep. and we did make some very important announcements mm. uh, towards that to try and measure, uh, particularly given that the channel that we are lending to you through is the M-Pesa channel, mm -hmm. the first thing we assess is how long have you been an M-Pesa customer? What is the quality of your data mm. uh, with M-Pesa in terms of indicators of strength of relationship? Um, how frequently are you using M-Pesa or mm. is it one off when you're collecting uh, funeral contributions and mm. then <laughs> you <laughs> and then you forward the money to <laughs> yes uh, then ability to pay there's again when you're looking at payments data there's a lot of indicators mm. of uh, payments uh, ability to pay mm. and then uh, willingness to pay is our previous credit history with you mm. so your very first loan you'll note your credit limit is lowest at that point because there aren't enough indicators of willingness to pay. Mm. If you're a first-time credit user and there's no history of you at uh, the Credit Reference Bureau. But over time, as you borrow and pay back with us, your credit limit then progressively grows. Yeah. So at what point do, does my positive credit score with CRB also come into this conversation? Actually, the first time you register with us, mm. that data is already at the CRB. Mm -hmm. And part of uh, our contract with you is that we shall check all available data mm -hmm. to be able to come to an assessment of how much we will qualify with you. Does that increase my limit, available so limit? It is part of the consideration in your score and hence your limit assignment. Your very first limit then is given on, based on the data that, that is available at the time of your joining of the service. Mm. Going forward, the biggest driver of how fast your credit limit grows is on Fuliza is if this product was intended as a four to seven day repayment, 
are you paying back within that period? Mm. Because when we scored you and assigned a limit to you, we had seen indicators that every four to seven days, this is the kind of inflow coming into your wallet. With the Mshwari, however, it's not just your repayment, but also your savings. And again, that's another dimension mm. uh, that is not given a lot of attention. Savings is is very boring activity. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but it is very useful. And I think uh, if you listen to uh, some of the statements the president has made, uh, to it is a very important thing for us as an industry, as a country, to actually shift the attitudes towards savings. Mm. Um, I think the way you put it is even the guys we borrow from, you know, our development partners, we're borrowing <laughs> the savings of their citizens. Mm. Um, the cost of funds also uh, in the country, you look across most countries, the cost of credit has a very strong correlation mm. to the degree of savings mm. by the nationals of that country because it then um, informs your one of the key parameters to cost of credit is you're borrowing someone else's money. What yep. is the cost of those funds? Yeah. How scarce are the, the funds available to lending? Mm -hmm. The yeah. category of citizen whom the banks, financial institutions, and CRB refer to as defaulters, mm -hmm. how do you rehabilitate these yes. individuals? What process is used so that they become, uh, should we say, trustworthy citizens mm -hmm. who can be relied on to do what they do? Mm -hmm. Do you have a mechanism that helps you understand how it is they got in the position that they did? Mm -hmm. And again, does it also consider take into consideration what it is that perhaps in the part of the education that you mentioned can be done to ensure that whatever it is that probably brought them into that position, if it wasn't something mm -hmm. that was beyond them, that they could overcome it mm. and uh, perhaps them make themselves more financially uh, viable than the, mm -hmm. they are. Mm. So first, I think uh, the industry has never labeled anyone as a defaulter. Um, I think it's when reports are or articles are being put out on media that yeah. then the term defaulter is, is used. Um, but a CRB, and maybe let me start by giving some hard facts about yeah. the CRB because yeah. again there's a lot of misconception we've had statements that uh, 18 million Kenyans are listed in the CRB mm. Mm. it is true 18 million Kenyans are listed at the CRB 14 million of them positive listing and four point something million of them with negative listing so again the, there is that uh, we have failed at communicating uh, mm. both the industry and I think also with the media as our partners that 18 million is not 18 million negatively Negative. listed. Yeah. Uh, and this is the CRB has existed for close to 10 years now where we're doing full file reporting. And in those 10 years, 4.5 million Kenyans have had a negative report listed. Now, it's not to say that those 4.5 million uh, Kenyans today have no access to credit in total. A negative listing or a positive listing for that matter, is basically information available to a lender to consider when making a lending decision. Okay. It is not binary that you're listed <laughs> negatively so. <laughs> so no, then why no has credit. That, credit. Why has the proliferation of such a message then been so wide? Yes. Because it would, as, it would I mean, we've heard it's all over the place and yes, that would yes. be the first question are you on crb because if you are <laughs> that might be a problem and, you know seven years in the dark kind yes, of thing yes, in the yes. wilderness of non-borrowing yes you know so i mean where where does that come from then and it does then seem as if institutions yes also help to proliferate the same thing i i will not disagree with you mm -hmm. uh, but maybe just give <laughs> a bit more information uh first i have the benefit of uh, doing this kind of business in yeah. five different markets mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i have to tell you the credit information sharing infrastructure in Kenya is the most developed mm -hmm. uh, in most of Africa. Mm -hmm. um, second, why has this proliferation? I think when CRBs were introduced, we launched the CRB as mm -hmm. an industry and walked away. Now we are using it without explaining, engaging mm -hmm. the customers, the market mm -hmm. on the purpose of the CRB. Mm -hmm. So you find now even employers are picking the CRB before you're employed, <laughs> let's check. There is nowhere in law, there is nowhere in banking practice that says before you're employed, yeah. check CRB. So these practices have evolved. 
and um, unfortunately negative news spreads so much oh, faster yeah. than positive news mm. so there's there's a very important job to be done uh, about the crbs and and probably allow me to segue here and say or describe what is it that we intend to do uh, with mshuari mm. and fuliza borrowers with uh, crb mm. um again what was understood is we are delisting everyone yes yeah. what we said <laughs> and we're not walking away from uh, the, the statements made on uh, uh, last week, mm. is we're going to present our customers with a programmatic credit repair journey where our customer, or we communicate to you that this is the extent of your owings that are past due, mm. okay? Proactively, because today to check your uh, CRB status, um, I think it's you're allowed cost. once per forget the exact term, yep. but then it's a cost. Yep. It is so, a cost. Yes. So again, that already is a barrier, a barrier mm. because your information at the credit reference bureaus mm. should be an asset to you as a borrower. So you should be able to very easily and as frequently as you choose be able to access that information. Second, we are going to present our customers with a proposal that says, okay, you owe us X amount Let's strike a deal with you. And all we need from you now is just a commitment to settle a part of the owings. And we'll give you a, a schedule for how to settle that those owings. But once you commit to that schedule, not once you pay the mm -hmm. owings, once you commit to the schedule, one, we delist you. And then two, we give your journey towards reinstating your credit limit with us. Mm -hmm. Now, we cannot influence other lenders. Okay. But at least when you recognize the significance of Mshwari and Fuliza, these are two very important devices that we think customers will appreciate mm -hmm. that we, we, we have, um, since launch, we have upwards of 16, 17 billion that has not been paid back. Now, we're not asking customers to pay back all of that. We're mm -hmm. saying, okay, let's work out something with them. The range of 25 Thirty percent. If we can work out a schedule of say up to three months, where you owe us five hundred bob, pay us two hundred mm. over three months, but we delist you and reinstate you mm. uh, to credit. Because again, we have to be careful about the signalling that uh, every so often, whether it is every five years, you can default and uh, not pay back. Yeah. Again, again, it goes against mm. uh, the fundamentals. <laughs> the entire uh, fundamental of, of it. Yes. Ah, Eric, this has been a very interesting conversation. I think we need more time. Like you said, mm -hmm. we need a lot of time to explain, to get everybody to understand what exactly this is, and especially mm. understanding the two products, mm -hmm. understanding the Emshuari product and the Fuliza product, mm -hmm. and the use for those products, the intended use for those products, the mm -hmm. advantage of picking whichever one you want to pick. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's a yes to come and get. No, certainly yes. Uh, there's a lot uh, we would have wanted to talk about. Uh, I think one of the other very exciting products uh, which has not gotten um, a lot of airtime, mm. uh, say relative to Fuliza, is Loop. Uh, Loop is um, a full banking service mm. that has does not involve a single piece of paper. Uh, we are able to give customers a, f uh, a payment experience, a mm. credit experience, and uh, access credit up to 3 million Kenya shillings mm. without filling a form, without entering a branch, eh. and borrow up to three years. So there's a lot to be talked about. Eh, that's yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need to. Yeah. Hey, Eric Morio Kinjage Thank is you. the group director for digital business at NCBA. We've been talking about Feliza. So there's a lot of work that's been done in the last week on charges reviewing charges for fuliza so we're understanding why how and then how you can take advantage of this it's a lot of information of course we are going to have you back again to have to have these conversations mm. thank you very much for tuning in to kenya's biggest conversation the situation room today wednesday join us again tomorrow thursday the sixth day of october 2022 have a lovely day it's 10 a.m